a, a an experiment of mother religion. Very quickly, it's already being implemented. But how will they go about global depopulation? They will provoke demonstrations that will become violent. They will declare martial law. This will become global. They already have detention centers for dissenters. They already have executive orders in the United States on what to do to dissenters. This country can become, I'm speaking of the United States, can become a police state in a matter of six months with what's already in the works, both as executive orders and as the mechanisms for implementing them. I, I, I'll tell you, I think it could, you know, uh, under the right circumstances, be a police state overnight. Uh, I don't think, and I don't want someone to go out there and say that I said that uh, that that's going to happen within the next 24 hours. But I think the I think the structures are in place, and um, you know, if if need be, if they or if they feel the need, uh, could implement. A police state pretty much overnight. Right um, now, there's only one difference between me and two million people that know exactly what I'm talking about in the United States alone. And that's that I have nothing to lose by coming forward and speaking, asserting myself on it. And you said two million. Two million. Yeah, who are the two million? Military, paramilitary, uh, insiders within covert black ops, uh, skunk works, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You cannot be inside without knowing that there is some direction. What, no matter if you're compartmentalized, no matter if you're under security restraints, you still know uh, that there is a direction and you know what the directives that are cat point, everyone, every project, uh, all the, the groups that are involved in both the social engineering, the military, uh, the implementation of detention centers, all of this uh, under groups like FEMA, I mean, it's been known for at least 10 years. Mm-hmm. But you think we're right at the edge of them doing this, and uh, that may be the case. Now, we, uh, we have to step away for a break, and when we come back from this break, we will continue talking with Mr. James Horak, so don't go away. Welcome back. We're talking with James Horak this evening. James, um, you are uh, you. You have uh, told us before that you are um, you have an affinity with these uh, EMVs, which stands for electromagnetic vehicle. Um, Doctor um, Bergren, who was with NASA at one point, and maybe he still is. I don't know. I think he's retired now. But a uh, very noted scientist, credentialed scientist, had talked about these same uh, types of vehicles, electromagnetic vehicles, being resident in the rings of Saturn. And I think people who are familiar with um, Command Sergeant Major Robert Dean 
uh, have probably by this time seen at least uh, the videos on YouTube where he shows pictures of these massive vehicles uh, located in the rings of Saturn. And so people are familiar with that. Or maybe they've read Dr. Bergeron's book, The uh, Ringmakers of Saturn. Um, but now they're around the sun. What does Dr. Bergeron say about these vehicles being uh, resident around the sun? I take liberties that uh, Dr. Bergeron has not been willing to take for the last 15 years, and that has something to do with why Dr. Bergeron sort of divorced himself from me. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? Does, does, does he say anything about these uh, EMVs being around the sun now? Uh, he is now. What does he say about them? He know, he understands that they are the EMVs that were in the rings of Saturn that he had detected before 1985. Okay, now, are these the same EMVs that were in the rings of Saturn, or is this a different set of EMVs? Hello? Is this the same set of EMVs that were resident in the rings of Saturn, or is this a different set of EMVs? Are they all the same? Okay, so this is not an additional bunch of EMVs. No, no. They, you have to realize they can uh, change size. Yeah. Okay, now... So that would mean that uh, a bunch of EMVs that were in the rings of Saturn have now moved over around our sun. Are there still some EMVs in the rings of Saturn? Yes. Do you know how many EMVs total there are working our solar system? Three hundred and thirty-three. Three hundred and thirty-three. That's a bunch. All right. Now, let's talk about the moon. And I'll connect that up in just a moment. But let's talk about the moon, our moon. Um, you have told us that it is populated. Um, there are humans there. Are there any, uh, according to what you've told us, are, are there any Earth humans there? Yes. Do you know how many? At least three colonies. And where are they from? What countries do they come from? Combination of the United States and other countries. member nations of NATO. Now, do you think that because of that, because that, that would indicate there is, um, uh, that would indicate that a number of countries are in on the inside information about space travel and inside information about uh, the moon. Uh, but do you think because the United States sort of tends to dominate NATO, that that would account for why so many countries keep their mouths shut about what's going on out in space. Because the United States doesn't want it, and they are in they don't doesn't want people to know, and these other countries are in NATO with the United States. Would that account for why they cooperate with the secrecy? Well, I, I don't think that there is a single motive. I think that some are corrupted. Some are just fed uh, fear. They're told that, uh, uh, that the United States and uh, a couple of other concerns outside the United States 
uh, have the best interests of the world at, at, at heart and are working with a group to protect them from uh, hostile alien threat. 